So today I would like to show you HiFi, a network of loopers that you can use to process live audio or a course recording between the loopers and adding randomness to everything. HiFi is a part of a commercial collection I worked on together with the developer of the Path Set collections. So it includes three modules. So there is HiFi, and there is Panther Cap, and also Truffles. There are also two uh, modules that are available for free. So there is HiFa and Truffle. You can explore both of them and experiment with them. HiFa is a slim version of HiFi, so you can use it to see if HiFi is something that you can enjoy. But let's really have a look at HiFi and how we can use it. So again, HiFi was designed to process live audio, so let's really have a look at the basics of how it works. As you can see, there are six loopers, three on each side. Each of them has more or less the same controls and each of them has also a fixed loop length. So there are uh, the main loopers. Each of them has a length of five seconds. Then there are the uh, micro loopers with a length of half a second, 0.5 second. And we have a pitch shifter with a length of three seconds and a repeater with a length of one second. And let's start actually with the main loopers. So we have a global input that will be sent to all of the dip, uh, different loopers, right? In this case, I have here the FM operators that I can just play with my keyboard. So I'm going to send a copy of it to um, HiFi, to the main uh, input. And let's record something on the first looper. Here we have the record button, right? I'm just going to uh, play something. Right? And we have a loop of five seconds in this case. Right, if I zoom in a bit, we can change the speed, which will change also the uh, pitch. Right, so this can be also longer than five seconds now, or shorter, depends. Right, and we can quantize this also to octaves with this uh, strip here. Or octaves and fifths. Right, we can change the play direction with this um, arrow here. No clicks, no pops, no anything. Right, we can change the level um, inside the global mix. Again, we have two main outputs left and right, so we can change the level of each of the loopers. We can change the panning. Right, so again, in this case, we have five seconds by default, um, but let's record something to the micro looper now. Let's do something like this. something else right I can also solo and mute all the different uh, loopers here there is the arrow if I click it with the left um, mouse button this will mute it if I click with the right it will solo so now we listen only to the micro looper right so we have more or less the same controls we have again speed right play direction level panning Right, we have also the pitch shifter. Again, I will just solo it, just so we can listen just to it, and let's record something else. Right, so this is now a pitch shifter. Again, in this case, the pitch control will change only the pitch without the playback speed. So again, if I quantize this to octaves, this is an octave down, but with the same playback speed. Or two octaves down. Right, again, we can play this back in reverse, for example. Right, then we have the repeater. Again, I will just solo the repeater. So let's record something there. Right, and then in this case, we have length and number, so the length of the repeats and the number of the repeats, so it will play it back, for example, twice. Or three times. Right, 
Right, and again, also here we have level, panning. Right, so now if I unsolo and we listen to everything. Right, maybe I can pan the repeater to the right and the micro looper to the left. Right, we can also add fade in and fade out per looper. So for example, I can have the main looper fade in. Now it's running from right to left. So if I just grab this right line here, I can add a fade in. Right, I can add here maybe also a fade in a bit. Something like this, right? Here maybe a fade out. Right, so you can see the texture it created. I can record something to the second looper here. Right, take it an octave down. Right, I can pan the first looper to the left, the second looper to the right. Again, add the fade in maybe. Right, and like this, continue and create textures upon textures. to show you the triggers section of the different loopers so in this case I will just record something directly to the micro looper right so now we have a short uh, loop going on so first of all I can add probability to the playback so it will not continue looping all the time if I zoom in a bit we have here the loop um, knob right for now it's on a hundred percent so there is a hundred percent chance that it will continue looping if I turn it uh, to zero there is no chance that it will loop and of course we have everything in between right so you can add already probability to this Right, we can also use external triggers if I take this all the way up and I connect, for example, a clock. Right, I can trigger this externally. But also to this I can add probability. So you can see that when I connect a trigger, the knob here jumps to the left. So now there is a 0% chance that the playback will, or the micro looper will play back by itself. It will only play with the triggers, but again, I can add also probability to this. So if I use, for example, a slower clock, now it's divided by eight, right? I can add probability that this micro looper will also add additional loops by itself. Right, and like this create a, something a bit more rhythmic. Right, but again, it will always play also with the external triggers. We also have for each of the loopers, we have start of cycle and end of cycle. So if I mute this for a second, I will record something to both loopers, right? Right, so this is the first one and let's try the second one. Right, and now I can use, for example, the end of cycle to sort of ping pong between them. So if I use the first one to trigger the second one and the second one to trigger the first one. Right, so now they will sort of ping pong and will create a longer loop. Now instead of five seconds, we have 10 seconds. And 
And now the thing that really opens up this module and adds lots of potential and functionality is the modifiers section. Basically, we can modulate and control almost everything on HiFi. So here, for example, I have a generative voice. I have some chords being arpeggiated and I have a generative clock. Just so we have something that is always changing, it will sound like this. Right, so the first thing that we can do is, for example, randomly record this generative voice into the first looper. So again, we have, in this case, eight modifiers. I can use the same clock, the same generative clock source to trigger this modifier. In this case, it's the gate. Right, so this will go to the modifier's input. Right, and now I can map it with probability to the recording function of the first looper. So if I click and hold this uh, die here, right, it will go into mapping mode. And now you can see I can map almost everything. And if I click and hold the record um, knob or uh, circle here, it will add probability to recording together with this trigger. Right, so I can set a bit of probability. I just click and hold. I click again the die to go out of this mode. And now it will randomly, let me mute. So now we just hear hyphy. Um, so now it will also randomly uh, record with probability. It will record new audio from this generative voice. Maybe I can take the probability a bit down. Right, it will record more and more loops. Right, in a generative way, no clicks, no pops, no anything. Right, by the way, if you want to use an external trigger to always record, for example, when you record a guitar or something like this and you need both hands, but you have a MIDI controller you want to use, you just set the probability to 100% and then it will always trigger the recording. Now, you can also add probability to other things, for example, to the playback direction. Again, if I zoom in a bit, again, click and hold, and then I can add probability for it to change direction, you see? Again, with each trigger. You can also do this to something like the panning, but in this case, because there is also a range, you will have also the possibility to change the range of modulation. So again, click and hold. And now in the circle, I can change the range just by holding uh, or by dragging up and down. And by dragging left and right, I can set the starting point. Right, and then here down I can set the probability. Right, and, and we can also add probability or randomness to the speed. And again, we can also quantize this to octaves or octaves and fifths. So also the modulation will be quantized. So again, um, I click and hold, then I change the range, the starting point and the probability. Again, no clicks, no pops, no anything. Right, so now with each trigger, it will randomly record, change the playback direction, speed, pitch, and panning. Right, I will record something also to the second looper. Again, we have this uh, generative voice going in. Right, I will take this an octave down. Make it play in reverse, maybe. Right, and now I can use the start of cycle trigger output with another modifier. So this will go to the second modifier. And now each um, looper has also an output, an audio output, as you can see. And this will output only the audio from this specific looper. Right, and this is the whole idea because now what I can do, I can take, for example, the audio from the first looper, send this to the micro looper, and now the micro looper will only get the audio from the first looper. Right, and now again, I can use this second modifier to add probability for the recording. And it will record only what's going on from the first looper. So if it's an octave down, if it's playing back in reverse and so on and so forth. Right, I can also add probability to the looping so it will not always loop.
Right now I can send for example the micro looper to the pitch shifter. Right, maybe use its start of cycle with another modifier and again add probability to the recording. Maybe to the panning also and everything. Right, something like this. Right, maybe I can take this an octave up. Right, and again it will always record something different because the audio is coming from the first looper to the micro looper, from the micro looper to the pitch shifter. And you can really create a whole network of cross recording and modulation. I want to show you quickly another type of modifiers, the CV modifiers that you can use with external signals as well. I have here a recording. Right, and now for example, I can use a sequencer to sequence the pitch. So I will use in this case the start of cycle to trigger the ADDR sequencer. Right, I can change the first modifier to CV mode. Basically, I just click this die here, right, and change this to direct CV. Instead of randomize, right, I will use the sequencer. Right, the speed here or the pitch is already quantized to octaves, so all I have to do is click and hold, add modulation, and open the attenuverter. Right, and now the sequencer will basically sequence the speed. Right, and because I'm using the start of cycle, each cycle will have a different length or different speed or a different pitch. I can use also something like an LFO to modulate the panning. So here I have an LFO. This will go to the second modifier. Again, I will change it to CV mode, map this in this case to the panning and open here the modulation. Right, and now I have an LFO controlling the panning. So if you want something that is not randomized and uh, use external sequencers and modulation sources, this is also possible. Right, so as you can see, there's so much to explore with HiFi. Don't forget to check out HiFa if you want to see uh, if this is something you can enjoy. Thank you again, Pathset, for working on this with me. I hope you enjoyed this video. Cheers.